uh, now I'm going to introduce to you a lady who I totally respect, by the way, because I just happened to read her introduction. So there are lots of products that I've been using in Pakistan, not knowing that these are created by people who are on the panel throughout, uh, you know, and uh, talking about uh, the co-founder of Atoms. Uh, let me tell you first a little about Atoms. So Atom is um, uh, a brand which is based out of New York City, and it makes the ideal everyday shoes. And uh, Atom has raised over 8 million US dollars from some of the top investors in the Silicon Valley. And in response to the COVID-19, it made a reusable everyday mask, which was rated best material by the Wall Street Journal. Now, not only that, before Atoms, our guest is going to be speaking right now, Sidra Kasim. She co-founded Marhor. And um, that was a startup that works with indigenous craftsmen to make handy handcrafted products and was funded by the prestigious startup accelerator Y Combinator. And she's originally from Okara. Uh, Sidra now lives in New York City. You will not believe it if I say this, but I'm wearing Marho shoes right about now on this day. And they are extremely comfortable. And I'm so happy to know uh, that, uh, you know, she's going to be chatting. It's like I kind of have like a, some kind of a connection with her. Really excited to hear her. So welcome on this platform, Sidra, and uh, take it away. <laughs> All right, I think you guys can hear me now. Uh, this is very interesting. You know, uh, I, I can't see like who, uh, who can see me, who can hear me, but I'm so excited to meet you everyone. My name is Sidra Kasim. I'm co-founder of Atoms and uh, Markhor. Um, and yeah, so Atoms is uh, a company based out of New York and we make sneaker and mask and uh, Wo called us most thoughtfully designed sneaker ever. And as you heard that Wall Street Journal called us best material mask, they actually tested 50 masks in the US and they called it Atoms best material mask. And also we have uh, received a really beautiful handwritten note from some of uh, designers we admire, product people we admire like Johnny Ive of Apple, we sent him shoes. He said, thank you so much for the shoes, love them. And uh, yeah, and if you uh, look at like Twitter, we have been receiving a lot of love from our customer as well as like people we follow and we admire. So um, yeah, Adams is doing really well. And uh, we have raised 12 million uh, from uh, prestigious investors in Silicon Valley, uh, including Atif Evan, Alexis Ohanian, Jeff Wiener, um, Serena Williams and some of like uh, rappers uh, like Chameleonaire and E40. Um, so very interesting list of people join Adams um, and helping us to grow this company. Um, when Jahan reached out to me to um, you know share uh, my journey about Adams, I was thinking, oh, is this the right time to share um, about my work? And then I started thinking about like what would be more meaningful. And I thought like, you know, some part of sharing my personal journey would be very uh, interesting for people who are watching uh, or listening to me right now, particularly people who are from the background I am from. So I was born in Ukara. This is me on the left side. Um, I am sitting in a, a workshop in Ukara. And uh, this this is the workshop where shoe making workshop where I learned about shoe making, and I particularly particularly takes care of uh, product uh, in the company, in Adams. And um, so I was born and raised in Okara. Uh, my whole education is from boys college in Okara, because there was no girls college offering uh, maths and economics, and Punjab government started one classroom in boys college. Um, where um, 30 people enrolled and most of them were girls. Um, and uh, there were like five, six boys. It was like very conservative kind of environment. We were like uh, in the same class where we were not allowed to like interact with each other. And um, 
I was uh, like also I born in middle class family. So, you know, four sister, two brothers, most of the resources you spend on boys or you invest on boys in a way that, um, you know, they are going to save your future. And you uh, you just like invest on your girls so that they can get married. They can good education. They can get a good education and then get married. Um, so that was kind of like dreams for my parents, too. But I was like kind of rebellious. I started looking outside and thinking about that, you know, how I can do better. Uh, I, I remember like when I was um, graduating, when I actually graduated, I had a conversation with my mother that I want to do. I want to go out of my town, explore more in my life. And there was a very interesting conversation. She said, no, like, you know, either you can become a teacher or you can go for marriage. There is no other choice. But uh, I resisted and, um, and that resistance like uh, took me you know i had to go through a lot of struggle with my family and i think um the interest and uh, the, uh, the reason i'm sharing this is because there might be a lot of girls um in this audience who would like to start something and also boys too like oftentimes like young people they have a, a lot of you know they need a lot of support particularly emotional support and they they get scared like is this something like i should take risk of or is this something uh you know if i would do my friends will make fun of me or is this something i can get uh, my family support um i think the most important thing is that you need to know that if you would not be doing that then how you would feel and in my case like when i thought about this i thought like okay if i'm not going to get out of my town I have uh, other women in my family. I have my sisters. Um, so they are also not gonna, you know, uh, explore more in their life. This is the same, this would be the same life pattern for them. Actually, I have one elder sister. She got married when she was 23 years old. She has four kids, very normal kind of life. She's happy, like she, that's what she wanted. But I wanted something different. And I knew like my other younger sister wanted different. Like my uh, my one younger sister, she's a, uh, uh, she was uh, under 19 um, cricket player and now she's an international fitness coach. And my uh, other sister, she has just started uh, her own startup, um, which is focused on women health. So it made, it made me feel proud that, you know, uh, later on they got chance to uh, go and explore more in their life. And um, now my parents also realize that how much it is important because they were they had a lot of fear um alongside the society and now you know they are very happy and they are supportive to my my uh, other sisters so this was like very important for me not only to like start my own journey and take to myself from one place to another but also um you know thinking about that what kind of inspiration what kind of way i am uh, building for other women in my family and um yeah and yeah, so fast forward, we started um, Markhor. Uh, Markhor raised uh, Markhor raised 107,000 US dollar on a Kickstarter campaign. It was uh, 2014, and it was one of the um, biggest Kickstarter campaign ever came uh, from Pakistan. And Markhor got selected in Y Combinator, and Y Combinator started another journey for me. Uh, y Combinator was also very interesting, very uh, tough for both Vakas and me, because we both are, you know, we uh, when we get we we were in YC. At the time, our English was not that good. We we uh, you know we are from Ukara. We never got a chance to speak in English. So whenever we were talking to our partners in Y Combinator, we were more focused on our grammar than our message. And then you were meeting like a lot of smart people, people who have built companies, not only once, but twice and thrice. And they have like sold their companies. And now they know a lot of people uh, in, in y, y Combinator already. And who you are like coming from Ukara and thinking, uh, you know, you, you have a big shot. Um, and yeah, that was like few months were very, very depressing. People were celebrating, oh, first company from Pakistan uh, into YSC. But we were getting into a lot of like, uh, kind of, you can say like identity crisis for some time. Like we were thinking about like, okay, where we are, what we are thinking, where we want to go. And then we were also the first company in YSC without a tech background. Like YSC is completely, you know, they take 
tech companies. So we were thinking like what we want to become from here. And we had a meeting with Paul Graham during that time. And that was the best meeting. He said, you know, you learned about American culture. You learned about everything from media, which is not true and most of the time. And he said, like, why not go and talk to your customers? So we started going out and start and talking to our customers. Um, we were going to Nike, Adidas, New Balance, Stanford Mall, you know, just going and, and looking at like what people are buying, what is the future of the shoes? Are we to are we uh, those people who are going to define the future of the shoes? So that led us to create Adams. Um, so we asked this question to ourselves why another shoe company and the answer you know came uh, from our research we were uh, um, when we were at nike and adidas store we were asking customer you know what they are buying and why they are buying and uh, many times they would say we are looking for a comfortable shoes we are looking for something which we can wear every day we are looking for something where we don't need to tie and tie our shoelaces or our shoes won't smell. So we started making notes of that and we did that research for one and a half year. It was a very long period because we all, we were also validating our ideas. We started with, a, we thought first we should make a tech shoes um, because you have to like create a whole ecosystem and Apple is the best ecosystem and all that. But then later on we realized that you know, people are going to compare this with your Fitbit or Apple Watch, not with your Nike shoes. And that's what we were not interested. And um, then um, we wrote a Google document where we the headline was ID and everyday shoes. And at that time, we had no idea if we we're going to get that shoes out or not. It was just like the research. And we put uh, on that document everything what should be in that shoes. And somehow we got connected uh, with a team in Korea and we made our first shoes. This is a picture with, um, you know, Maisie Williams. She came to our uh, basement. Um, a lot of people might know uh, her from uh, her character, Arya Stark in Games of Thrones. Um, so uh, she came into our basement. This is our San Francisco uh, home. We were living upstairs in one room and then we had this basement downstairs. And we were inviting like uh, some of our friends and people uh, in in San Francisco who uh, were friends of friends, and they kind of like um, started knowing about that. Oh, they, they are starting the shoe company, and the shoes is very very comfortable. We were inviting them on breakfast. We were Vakas and I. We were cooking uh, Pakistani breakfast, Pakistani chai for them, and then just generally asking like you know what kind of shoes they wear, why they prefer certain shoes on certain. Uh, uh, one shoes another, and the other question we were asking was like, you know, um, how they think uh, about products, and a lot of our initial learning built from these interaction. Like we met almost, I think, I would say like 50, 60 people. We invited them, and uh, sometime, you know, and at the end of like uh, this uh, conversation, we would like offer them to wear Adams. And they would wear the shoes, and that was the you know the magical moment for them. They would open their eyes, and they would say, "Oh my God, this is so comfortable." And that was the moment when we realized that okay, we have something, you know, and we should we should launch this. And the interesting thing also happened: these people um, started sharing about us on Twitter and Instagram, and initially, like they were sharing, uh, uh, you know, very interesting photos, but. Um, then we started taking their photos and uh, they we we just like randomly send them and they were like you know uh, sharing that on social media and that's how like people started noticing about Adams Atif Ivan we connected uh, during that same time he was coming to our basement he was coming like around 10 p.m. and was staying with us like around midnight uh, after midnight like sometime 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. and then one day he said he wants to invest in our company. And we and it was not a small check. It was a big check. Like he 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 took all our seed round. And we asked this question to him that why you are taking such a big risk? Why not you go and invest in bitcoins? And he said, um, you know, this is more fun. Bitcoin is not that fun. So, anyways, we 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 want to make a product which is like customer focus, and that's our goal is and. 
the other thing is like um, not just like making product which are best of the best but also how you can create an experience around that and not launching product which are just you know average because you have to launch it uh, launching something which which is innovative people really want it and then with mask we we learned that there is very important part which we, right now we are talking uh, a lot in our companies how we how how products can create social impact a society impact you know it can, how it can create a impact on society like mask is that product and we have donated like 300000 mask other than like uh, selling like 500000 mask so far um so uh, also i wanted to like quickly um share with you guys my learning uh, particularly coming from that background and building this business um i think one of the most important thing is that um how you actually overcome your challenges uh, and struggle it basically defines you uh, there every person even if you come from my background not come from my background every person goes through a lot of challenges um which is sometime inside us we carry on you know uh, some of our childhood traumas and insecurities and all that but how you come out of it it, it, it that is very very important and the second thing is like women like it's not only important uh, that we as a society invest in women but i think women should also invest in themselves and it, that is more important we should not leave our seat at the table and that is the future most of the companies that are successful um, they have uh, someone a women leader um, in their company and uh, like i i still go through a lot of challenges of being a woman sometime only women in one room um when i go uh, meet with our vendors in korea when i meet investor here i still remember then when my co-founder and i we were entering into a room uh, most of the people were asking question to him and then i have to train him i have to talk to him that hey you know this is how i i want us to you know have an equal uh, partnership or when we go and meet with people i want to have my opinion on the table so it took some time but yeah i i had to like talk about that and then a long term commitment to learning uh, growth and learning that is super important Con you know um consistent work is very important and sometime you will fail or sometime you will you will get succeed but um the important thing is that what you are learning how you are growing out of it um that's that's what i'm still investing on myself each day i'm learning you know so i have not built uh uh i i i never did any job before like in any any startup this is my i started my career right there um so uh i have to like learn and unlearn a lot of things and i am still committed to that um read books it's very very important to connect with the right kind of people and also like um Uh, so sometimes like also talk to yourself in terms of like writing and see like where you are and what kind of things like you have built which are not good as a bad habits and you have to unlearn that um that is very important and i am i think i'm done with my time so i'll be looking forward if you guys have any question and uh, yeah thank you so much and uh, you guys can reach out to me i'm pretty active on twitter and uh, uh, i would love to help particularly people who are coming from same background and they want to like build uh, amazing ideas thank you very much hi sidra do you hi. see me <laughs> yeah how are you good to see you Good to see you. Oh, I can see you. Wow. Let me stop sharing so, my amazing story and you know the first question that comes to my mind is how do you stay grounded and humble despite all the success that you have experienced coming from such a humble background and now being such a recognized brand all over the world. How do you you know keep grounded and stay humble because you know in pakistan if anyone had known the kind of success you have uh they wouldn't talk to anybody you know that right <laughs> so so yeah i want to know your opinion about that because i think young people especially uh feel this that when they reach out to a lot of people who are very successful or have made a lot of money
they find that they don't get that kind of engagement that possibly they get with you. Uh, and you've already offered that you would be talking to people, whether it's young women or men who want to do the same kind of thing. So how yeah. about sharing, you know, how you do this? Yeah, uh, and Jaha, uh, first of all, so good to seeing you. Uh, it's been a long time we have not met. I We have been interacting through Twitter. Uh, so, go so good to see your face. Um, so for, uh, you know, how to be grounded, um, this is very interesting. Like when we were uh, in Pakistan, we, Vakas and I, we were unfortunately were not able to like interact with a lot of people and we were just focused on our work, but we were interacting with people in Silicon Valley. And uh, also like we, our group in Pakistan was also very, very short. Like some of those people who were helping us out, we were connected with them. Um, I think one of the things which we have learned uh, where we are, we are not just like because of our passion and how we have worked, but also a lot of people helped us. Like it's not, we were and Sidra would not have been um, at the place where we are. Um, and, um, you know, sometime like we, we are still in touch in those, with those people and they uh, connect us with some, you know, someone who is like us with the same background and need help, we connect with them. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure like um, how this, uh, you know, humbleness or groundedness uh, came from. Um, but I think Vakas and I, we always realized that there are people who invested on us and we were like, just, uh, we were just like sending a tweet to them and asking that, hey, can we meet? And when whenever we, we were meeting with them, we just talk about like what we are doing. And some of those people like gave us their time. Some of people uh, made connection, you know, uh, they connected us with their network or some of those people also invested in our company later on. Um, I think uh, you you can find uh, good people around you. Just You just need to see like uh, who is open uh, to give uh, their time. And that is possible. Uh, right now, like sometimes I feel a, a lot of pressure. You know, I also don't have a lot of time because I have to give so much time to my company. So sometimes I feel pressure that uh, I am not giving back as much. But uh, I recently started investing in a uh, small startup. I invested in some startup in Pakistan and some in Silicon Valley. That's what like I, I am thinking like my way of giving back in one way or the other is and I'm here to help. That's amazing. Also, Sidra, you know, you've, uh, Bakas and you have built a brand. Many startups and actually established companies in Pakistan find it very difficult to build a brand. What are the kind of takeaways that you have gotten on how to build that brand? Because you have done some really innovative things mm -hmm. in order to first uh, build Mahor as a brand and now Atoms. So are there any tips that you can provide to startups here uh, that they yeah. can learn from? Absolutely. I think uh, brands are built with consistency. Um, uh, you know, you do some, you do something and then uh, you don't see enough result and then you change your strategy and keep going. And the other thing is like storytelling, a lot of storytelling, like what you are doing, why you are doing, sharing that behind the scene with your customer. And um, always like, you know, uh, looking at from a customer side, like whenever even now when we are designing our product, we, uh, we always think about, okay, we are making this product, but how we want to tell the story of the product. So story start from the, uh, stage where we start thinking about what we want to launch, what we want to make. And that story, like by the time you, you develop that product, that story also develop. And uh, we we both like keep investing in our taste. Like I, I remember uh, we still sometimes go back and see our previous work and just to have a gut check, like, you know, are we growing or not growing? Uh, we build our first site on Google site. I think Jahan, you have seen that because, we, you know, we, Pasha gave us grant and that, that how we, we launched uh, a version of Markor, which was hometown. And um, we sometimes go back and see like, you know, we, from what, what kind of taste we had. And we invest in our taste. We learn about good things. We learn about high quality things. And then we uh, we we have like some, uh, some of our favorite brand um, who are very good with storytelling, how they talk about their product, how they interact with their customer, how they build a customer experience. So there is a lot of learning. If I would say like, I, I would say that, um, you know, just keep 
investing on yourself and see like how you can work on this and, and to build a um, brand you have to tell a lot of stories like this is all about storytelling through visual or through words okay and last uh, i wanted to ask you what your transition was like from hometown shoes to atoms you know it it was quite a journey from hometown shoes to markor to atoms so any learnings that you would like to share what was that transition like oh sorry i think i was mute sorry yeah, yeah. so i uh, i just wanted to say that markor is a very very different company uh, than atoms um uh markor we started with lot of like lack of resources lot of restrictions like sometime the restriction was we are not able to make high quality product i remember we actually bought a shoes from mr porter and we got that shoes in pakistan and we bought that shoes uh for $500 and we paid equal amount uh of duties and it costed us a lot the reason we wanted to buy that shoes was because we wanted to show italian quality to our craftsmen and uh they looked at that shoes because whenever we were showing them like something from pictures they were thinking oh this is not possible and then we had to like you know teach them no this is possible so they started thinking about even like inventing tools in order to achieve that so markor actually worked in a very restricted in environment uh, but it the idea is very very solid still um and you know like a lot of now big brands are uh, working on peshawari chappal which makes us like super excited that we were the first one who introduced this in in international market and uh, adams um Adams is a very product focused company we decided that we are not going to launch so many product we will only launch uh, when uh, something is uh, you know we can bring something innovative in the market we want to uh, compete uh, atoms we want to like scale on a very big level and we we are thinking about that uh, you know we are aiming for nike that's where we are and um we have learned so many things from marco that we are implementing in atoms i i think marco provided us that if you can say like a school or a university that helped us to understand that you know what is possible what is not possible and how we have to like grow ourselves to become something that can take atoms uh, on a higher level um and uh, we also with atoms we had a lot of international exposure in markor we were living in pakistan and just like looking uh, sitting in pakistan and looking outside world now we both are experiencing that world we are living in that international world um so that is a very different perspective now we are not looking at like one customer we are looking at even human psychology too you know why people like some product why people like why people don't like some product what excite them what don't excite them and what kind of like group we want to create always an excitement atoms is more focused on creative crowd we want to you know uh, create excitement for designer for creative for people who are creating some meaningful work out there so very very different kind of thank you and i must thank you also for my atoms shoes and all the shoes that all our speakers at zero to one disrupt 2020 are going to receive as well as the nest io team we love our mask we will certainly everybody will love their shoes thank you so much for your generosity and i'm sure you'll find that you'll see lots of pictures of people wearing atom shoes in karachi and the rest of pakistan yeah i'm so excited about this and thank you guys uh, for organizing this event you guys have put so much work i really appreciate this thank you take care jahan